Is there a difference when we think about security for a supercomputer or high-performance computing versus another kind of computer? Or I'll extend it to include privacy and trustworthiness. I mean, is there any different way of looking at that kind of compute? I don't think fundamentally there is. In other words, when I think about running a workload and securing the data and keeping it private, a supercomputer fundamentally is very similar. There's a couple of things I think of, though, that make it a little different. One thing is supercomputers don't tend to allow multiple applications to run on the same node. That provides a little security. Obviously, you still have to secure the borders. But supercomputers, since people are trying to get the ultimate in performance, they don't tend to want to share their nodes and multitask. That's inefficient. So when you're actually running a workload, you run it full bore on at least the part of the machine you're on. But the other thing is supercomputing, of course, by its nature, is the most computationally intensive capability we can put in one place, exploiting or tearing through privacy, those concerns get multiplied when you put more compute power together. So I think among HPC folks talking about privacy and ethics, it's a very important topic and one that I hope all of us as engineers are concerned about. Can you talk a little bit about how this intersection of artificial intelligence and AI workloads and machine learning workloads are coming together with HPC? Yeah, it's it's super exciting, but you won't find me calling them AI workloads. I look at AI as a technique. So I will very commonly say AI is a technique, not a workload. And to explain that a little, if you look at problems that we might want to solve, molecular dynamics, which is, is a simple concern of simulating the world of a lot of molecules bouncing around. Maybe some of those molecules make up a cell membrane, some of them make up a virus, some of them make up a drug that's trying to interact with the virus and stop it from going through the cell wall. You bounce those around and you have to inject some randomness. And in those simulations, we tend to do things called Monte Carlo operation. There's been some very interesting work, some of it from CERN, looking at can you replace the Monte Carlo operations with a neural network that was trained, that's AI. And basically, they took a neural network, a GAN network, or I should say GAN because the N stands for network, and they trained it by letting it watch Monte Carlo operations. And then they basically plugged it in and said, uh, behave like what you saw. And the results were really exciting. It was able to do simulations that seemed to give us comparable answers at a fraction of the compute power. So they're looking at using that possibly to simulate the next generation Hadron Collider detectors so that they can keep looking for what happens when you split into subatomic particles. We've seen this in weather simulations. People work very hard at algorithms to ascertain what the weather is going to be, but they also have done AI training on parts of that critical parts of the weather model and seen it perform the same or better, detecting things like atmospheric rivers and other weather phenomenon that affect our weather. And so AI is taking its way into what people would call traditional HPC workloads as solving parts of the problems that were solved other ways before. So I find it a very exciting intersection, if you will, of AI techniques with traditional HPC techniques. But uh, I would just eventually call all of it high-performance computing because it's all about solving those problems.